Isabella and we are learning about title stories. Yep, we are indeed. And this week, Rosie, we're going all the way back to the beginning of our Bibles, back to Genesis. Oh, that's where uh, Noah. Yep. Noah and the ark was with the rainbow promise. Remember? I do remember. So we're looking at a story known as the Tower of Babel. 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 Daedal. Babel. Not Daedal. I can't say these. Daedal. 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 It's fine, Rosie. We're going to be learning about the, the Tower of Babel um, and how much God dislikes pride. Okay. Well, I don't like pride either. You know, the day say pride comes before the fall. It does indeed. And we're going to see just how that happens here in our next Bible story. Okay, so how, how does it start? So this is, is quite soon after, after Noah. In fact, it's the very next story in my little Bible after we learn about God's promise with the rainbow to never flood the earth again. So here, at this time, there was a king who was very, very prideful, and he wanted everyone to know just how cool he was. But he wasn't that cool, was he? I don't think so. I don't think so either. But he said, I want to build a tower that can reach heaven, because then everyone will know who I am. But you can't reach heaven, can you? No, you can't. But this king thought he did. So he got everyone working and building, and everyone was so invested and they all really wanted to reach heaven too. So it wasn't only the king who was prideful. Everyone was prideful. Everyone was prideful. Or, or did God know what was happening? God always knows what's happening. He is everywhere and he knows exactly what's going on. So he knew that they were all trying to build this tower to reach him. He knew that they couldn't. But the fact that they were prideful made God upset. Oh, I remember because you said that God doesn't like pride. So then, Bella, what did God do? Well, Rosie, at the time, everyone spoke the same language. But God decided to scatter them by making them all speak different languages. <gasps> So they all started babbling and speaking things that no one else understood. Someone was speaking French, another person was, was speaking Italian, and then someone else speaking Chinese. Yeah, and no one could understand each other. And from there, God scattered them across the earth. And that's how languages were born. Well, that is quite cool. Yeah, so yes, God got them to start building this tower. And yes, Scattering them with not being able to understand each other was a punishment, but we can see how big and cool God's plans are. Because now we have all these different cultures that God loves. Yeah, so even though it was a punishment, it's now become something so beautiful, and, and this is God's whole plan. I think that God is, is a... a Hey everyone, 
for those I haven't met, my name is Candice and I will be doing the kids talk today. Do you have a pair of these? Do you wear flip-flops when you go to the beach? How about when you go skiing in the snow? When you go visit camels in a desert-like country, do you wear flip-flops? There are a lot of good things about flip-flops and a few bad things. For example, how clean are your feet after a long day of wearing flip-flops? Probably not so clean because you don't have shoes or socks to keep the dirt out. So for a long day of wearing flip-flops, your feet are filthy and probably stinky. In Jesus' time, they didn't have socks and shoes to keep the dirt out. You could just imagine how dirty their feet were with all the dust and the camel poop. In fact, it was such a mess that a tradition formed that if you were invited into someone's house, a servant would have to wash your feet. Do you think there were many servants volunteering for this job? Probably not. Do you think our president would wash the feet of his dinner guests? Would you wash the feet of your friends as they came into your house for your birthday party? In Jesus' time, only the lowliest servants would be made to wash feet. So when Jesus got on his knees and washed the disciples' feet, it was a huge deal. Now we're going to watch a video to explain this story. God's story, Jesus' Last Supper. So part of God's story is about the night before Jesus died, and it begins like this. Jesus knew he was going to go back to heaven soon, but he hadn't finished teaching his friends everything they needed to know. So he planned a special supper with 12 of his closest friends, called his disciples. A disciple means a Jesus follower. Anybody who follows Jesus gets to be his disciple and his friend, including you and me. So Jesus was sitting around the dinner table with his friends eating supper. We call it the Last Supper because it was the last meal they ate together before Jesus died on the cross. During the meal, Jesus suddenly left, got a big bucket of water and a towel, knelt down on the floor, and started washing the disciples' feet. That was awfully nice of Jesus because back then, people walked around on muddy roads without wearing shoes or sandals. They probably stepped in a lot of dirt and camel poop. And now here was Jesus kneeling right next to their dirty, sweaty, stinky, poop-caked feet. It might sound like Jesus really hated dirty feet, but even though dirty feet can be pretty gross, especially if you've just stepped in camel poop, Jesus was actually teaching his disciples how to act like him. See, Jesus came to earth so that he could serve other people, even if that meant helping them with things like scrubbing their stinky feet, because Jesus thinks helping people is the coolest. And after Jesus leaves, it's up to his disciples to show people how Jesus would act if he were still on earth. Do you think you could show somebody how to act like Jesus? Well, after that, Jesus had some more to teach his friends. Hopefully he washed his hands since he touched all those feet, but we don't know for sure. Anyway, Jesus knew the disciples might have a hard time always acting like him. So Jesus told them he was going to send a special helper called the Holy Spirit to show his friends how to act like him. And the Holy Spirit still helps Jesus' friends today. And that's a part of God's story. Okay, Jesus spent his whole life serving others. Before he was crucified, his last loving act to his disciples was washing their dirty feet, one of the dirtiest jobs of the lowliest servants. But it was not too dirty for Jesus. If Jesus was willing to wash the feet of the men who followed him, we need to be willing to do something similar. We are Christians. That means we follow Christ and serve others like Jesus did. We can show other people who don't know him that he loves them. We can serve others like he did because he was a servant and sacrificed himself for us all. And we should do the same with sacrificing our wants or time for others. Now, I have four exciting questions that I really want to get answered. So come along with me as we answer these, first quest these four questions. All right, question number one. Why was it such a big deal that Jesus washed the disciples' feet? Jesus is the son of man, and he did not come to earth 
to be served, but to serve. Jesus was the teacher and master of the disciples, and at the Last Supper, he washed their feet. He was more important than a, a principal or a president would be to us. And so when the disciples left everything they had behind to follow Jesus, they did this because they truly believed he was the Son of God. Seeing the man they believed to be the Messiah or the Savior or their rescuer wash their feet sent a powerful message to the disciples and sends a powerful message to us too. It was a huge deal that Jesus washed the disciples' feet because he was the king of kings. He came to serve and not to be served. If Jesus was the king of kings and he came to serve his disciples and us, then how should we treat our friends, our neighbors, and even our enemies? My second question is, if we are to follow Jesus, what does that mean for me? Let's open our Bibles and read Philippians 2, verses 5 to 8. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. In this passage, it says that we are united with Christ in his death and resurrection. So as free people, we could be united in his actions to serve others. In verse five, it says, in your relationships with one another, you must do the same as he did. In following Jesus, we must set aside our own needs and put the needs of others first, counting others and God more important than ourselves. We are putting ourselves second, making a commitment that might lead to rejection, but we must follow Jesus' example. So what is the greatest example we can find in the Bible and in our lives of service? If you said Jesus' death on the cross, then you would be spot on, well done. The crucifixion was the greatest example of Christ's obedience to God. He humbled himself to the point of death so that we might be saved. Jesus is the greatest servant and he lived a perfect life and yet he willingly gave it up for us so that we might be saved from our sins. We follow his example every time we serve others. We show God's love when we serve other people. Now my third question is, why is it so important to count others and God more important than ourselves? Jesus suffered and died on the cross so that we might be led to follow his example. We are to imitate, copy, and follow Jesus' example by using our freedom to serve others for the sake of the gospel. So when we live differently as Christians, we are serving others. We are copying Jesus and glorifying God. And we are showing people who do not know Jesus how he would have acted. Jesus teaches us how to act like him so we can show others his love. The reason why we do this is to show God's love to others. Jesus models how we can do this even in the face of unjust suffering. Living in a way that brings glory to God, we can serve God, but this will not earn God's love or his favor. But because we are changed or transformed by the Holy Spirit, once we trust in Jesus, we cannot serve in our own strength. 
So Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to help us to serve and to show people who don't know Jesus as their rescuer or savior, what he is like and how he would have acted if he was still on earth. Now, my fourth question is really important, so I hope everyone's listening. There will be a pop test at the end. I'm just kidding. All right, fourth question, let's get to this. How do we serve other people by showing God's love? We know as Christians, we have been freed by God from the law of sin and death. Christians use this freedom to live for God and instead of living for themselves. Living for God involves submitting to human authority and serving others. In 1 Peter 2, 19 to 21, we see Christians are enduring or bearing up or submitting to a whole range of, of sufferings or, or hardships. So they're enduring suffering when they've done wrong, which makes sense. They're also enduring suffering when it's unjust or unfair. They're also enduring suffering when they're doing good. Peter tells us to know that God is worthy of our trust, even when we are suffering or treated unfairly or unjustly. While we are doing good, we can trust God that in this time of suffering, he will give us the Holy Spirit so we can be obedient, humble, and loving because Jesus was our example. In washing the feet of the disciples, Jesus was humble and served them with love. And in these verses, Peter is saying that everyone, no matter how difficult or hard their lives are, could serve God by submitting to authority. We can follow Jesus' example of serving others by obeying our parents or not visiting our friends during lockdown. God makes us humble and obedient. We love because God first loved us. We serve because Jesus first served us and he gave us the perfect example to follow. All right, this is the lesson. So recap on what we've learned. We have been reminded that Jesus is the son of God. He came to earth to serve and a good leader leads by example. And Jesus has been setting an example for us throughout his whole life of what service should be. He was a servant to the people who were helpless, sick, hungry, and hurting. Jesus serves each one of us, even though we haven't seen him yet, because he came to earth to serve us by being a sacrifice. He was our savior and our rescuer from sin. We can know with absolute certainty that God loves us and Jesus wants us to serve one another and we can live a life of service because Jesus first served us. All right, thank you everyone for listening. Please visit our website for a list of family, fun, questions, crafts and activities. Bye, see you next week. I was going to look down to say I'm Candace. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I am Candace. <laughs> oh no.